Good afternoon all. Um, today I want to continue my solar charge controller project, pulse width modulation PWM solar charge controller. Um, this is in association with JLC PCB from who these printed circuit boards came. Now in a previous video I fitted the voltage regulator and a couple of tantalum capacitors, um, a little ceramic capacitor there and a dual diode which is there. Um, in this video, I want, to, I want to fit more components, but what I need to really fit now is the microcontroller. And that's where things get a little bit complicated because the only programmed microcontrollers I've got are dual in line, and I need to program up uh, a surface mount microcontroller. And for that, I'm gonna use this um, ZIF socket, which is what I program the dual in line uh, microcontrollers. And I'm going to have to find the little adapter which takes the surface mount and adapts it to dual in line. Then I'm going to have to find the PIC programmer, run up the programming software. It's all going to get a bit complicated. Right, my little um, surface mount 8-pin to 8-pin dip adapter is plugged into this um, PIC sort of demo programming board. Um, but I think I'm going to use this because this is what I was programming my charge controller chips with um, that should fit in there and then I can pull down the lever so yeah that seems to fit in there now this has a load of linking pins um, I can't remember much about this and I've actually been to this website j1sys.com and it's not actually functioning at the moment so um, as far as I remember this is set up for um, eight pin chips I presume these various link options are for different numbers of pins on here but I've never changed this this has always been set up for 8 pin there is something I can do as a quick test actually um, I just know some of these pin connections from memory so let's just do this with a bleep out um, I know that um, and they're marked here so we've got VPP M clear there the next one in is VDD and the next one's VSS I know that VPP will be the uh, this pin here. Yes, that bleeps out. Um, VCC I know is pin 1, so that should be up there. That bleeps out. VSS I know is pin 8, so that should be there. That bleeps out. And these other two, as far as I remember, are um, IO1 and IO0. So one of them should be there. Yeah, it's one of these two. And the next one is the other one. So that all bleeps through. I think I'm okay to use this for the 8-pin chip and um, use this adapter for the surface mount because the, the pin numbering is the same between the surface mount and the dual in line. Uh, right, I need a pit kit programmer. So I found this uh, pit kit too. I'm pretty sure this is the clone one because it doesn't say microchip on it. So let's plug that in with the pin one marker towards uh, pin one on my cable. That goes like that. Um, I've got a USB... Uh, <laughs> All my stuff's falling all everywhere. Uh, USB mini, that is. That's the slightly older style. That will plug into there. That's plugged into my PC already. So that's kind of ready to go. Right, now I need some surface mount uh, PIC 12F683s. And I found some uh, in this little tube. This was in with the um, NeoPixel stuff when I made that Christmas decoration with the little surface mount um, 12F683. So those are the chips I need. So now I'm trying to find the firmware and this is proving difficult because it's many years since I've last played with this and firstly it took a while to find the various files. Now the latest firmware version was actually 1.2 but I found a couple of files here that are called 1.3. This one 1.3 not and this one 1.3. Now I've got a feeling 1.3 not disabled the LED completely. There was a chap who wanted the charge controller to have the LED never flash at all because no one would ever look at it. I think this was in some remote location. 1.3, I've got a feeling, was the exact opposite. This was um, that the LED would always flash and that the mechanism to disable the LED, there was a switching mechanism to disable the LED so that you could have the unit use less power. Um, in this version, I think is completely disabled. It confused people. People didn't really understand how it worked. And I can go into that in more detail. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this in my 
series on the PWM5, but I think this is the one I want. And if I look in the switch section here, I've got um, a BSF mode.0, and this is the whether the LED is uh, displayed or not, I just happen to remember. And it's BSF before this uh, status flag check, and it's BSF after. So in both cases, it does the same thing. Um, this says change to BCF, so bit clear file, um, if you want the LED disable feature. Well, I don't. I want the LED to not be able to be disabled, if you see what I mean. So pretty sure this is the one. This is the one I'm going to program. I'm actually going to close that one. So this is my um, firmware file. And uh, this is the problem. You create special versions of the firmware for people who ask for uh, special versions, and you get yourself into a right royal pickle because uh, you can't remember what version does what. But I didn't do too many of these special versions. I'm not sure Bluetack was such a brilliant idea in the end of this um, chip tube. So I'm pretty sure this is the one where the LED will always flash, irrespective of whether you try to disable it. You won't be able to disable it. And that's what I want, because when I um, attach this chip, programmed chip, to this board, I want it to flash the LED in such a way that it tells us the voltage that's on this, um, these input pins. That'll tell me that it's working. So let's get one of these chips out. Mm. Oh, I've got about five. Right, I should be okay to put this chip in the carrier. Um, this has the power light on, but not the target light. Pretty sure the target light comes on when it powers this um, system up. So let's take this chip, try and drop it. Oh, I need to press down on there. Try and drop it in there and release that. So that should now be, let's get in a little closer on that. Right, that is in its carrier. It looks like all eight pins are attached to the sort of um, these spring-loaded pins. Uh, pin one is down in this bottom left corner. That's aligned with that. That should be correct. Now I need to um, attempt to program the firmware into that chip. And uh, that means remembering how this all works. I know I need to select a programmer, so I'm going to select uh, pit kit two this should tell me whether it's working so it says target power not detected powering from pit kit two the target led has come on so i think it's powering the chip um oh yes it says pick 12f683 found so it does it is seeing that uh, chip and the pit kit two is ready so now i need to assemble this uh i think that is i think i can do a quick build Let's try it. Oh, build failed, right? <laughs> What's that all about? Now, I seem to remember that this program had problems with very long path names, and that file is on my server, so it's sort of on a remote uh, server with a very long path name. I've got a feeling if I move that onto my PC, um, somewhere close where the path name is not that long, it should work. I'm pretty sure I've had this before. OK, so I've put the same file in a different place on my PC. The path name shouldn't be as long. Let's go to Project uh, Quick Build. Oh, and we've got masses and masses of uh, messages. And these are all uh, register. The register I'm talking to is not in Bank Zero. Make sure that you've flipped your bank bits. Well, I have. But the build succeeded, so that looks fine and it should have created a hex file. Um, so that's all working. The path is shorter now. I've just put it in my local documents folder. So now I should be able to program it um, using the programmer's program um, commands. Well, I think I'll just go ahead and do a program. Is it going to work? Kind of. Looks like it might have done. But how do I know? Now, I'm just wondering whether I can test this chip actually in this demo board um, because all it's doing is it's measuring on an analog input and there's a pot on here called ADC. Now, if I link that across, I think it's to GP0, so it's the second one down inner pin, that means I can put the pot into the A to D input that I'm actually using in the program. Then if I link an LED to GP1. I'm pretty sure that's where the LED is uh, on this program. 
I should be able to vary that pot and see some sort of indication on one of the LEDs. Let's give it a try. Right, a couple of DuPont wires. I'll take the ADC uh, out to outer pin. That should be um, the pot. And I'll link it through to GP0. Pretty sure that's where it goes. Um, GP1 which is there should go to the LED. So I can put it to the adjacent LED, LED two. So that should do something, I hope. Um, this seems to have the target light still on. So it's probably got target power to the target. Well, this is just a, a socket. So there's nothing actually on there. Let's take that off. Uh, this I seem to remember has to go upside down. Let's plug it in. And we've got um, a light flashing, but does that bear any relation to what the program is supposed to be doing? I'm not sure. It doesn't look quite right to me. Yes, I think this is okay, actually. Um, I remember now these LEDs are actually um, sort of fitted in reverse. So they are on when the output is uh, low. Now that is the flash once every half a second or so to tell me that the voltage is below 11 volts. So that looks plausible. If I turn this, so that's still below 11 volts. Let's turn it the other way. Um, if I turn it high, it's modulating. It thinks it's pulse width modulating. So that's fine. That looks about right. If I turn it to there, it should give me some sort of voltage indication. Uh, but it's quite a long cycle. I didn't see that. Yes, these pulses are very short, so the camera may not capture them. They're deliberately very short to keep power consumption down. It doesn't look like power consumption is low at the moment because this is in inverse. But that's going uh, one flash and lots of um, rapid flashes. Let's tweak that back a bit. Oh, that's below 11 volts again. Let's take that up a bit. It's quite sensitive, the pot adjustment. Uh, what's that going to do? One flash and about eight flashes. So I think that's telling me it's 11.8 .8 volts. Let's take that up slightly. Let's get it just below the modulation point, which is there. And I'm looking for, now you may not even be able to see this. So I apologize if this is really boring. Uh, one, two, three, and one. So that's 13.1 volts. Let me just see on the camera whether it is picking up those switch offs. One, two, three, one. Yeah, you are seeing them. So yeah, that appears to be working. That's indicating 13.1 volts. Of course, it's meaningless um, on here because it's just um, a pot on five volts. But when it's on this circuit with um, the potential divider in this ratio, 82K and 20K, then it's going to tell you the voltage at VBAT. So that looks good. So I'm pretty sure this is a program chip. Let me take it out of its carrier. If I can get it, out you come. Um, and that is going to go on the board. So I've got to get the soldering iron out now. Right, just while the soldering iron warms up, let's put a little bit of flux down here on this bit of plastic. So I've got a little bit of flux there. Uh, I'm going to dab it on the area where the chip's going to go. So it's swimming in flux now. Now I apologize for this being quite far away, um, but the trouble is if I get the camera too low down, I can't actually see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to put a bit of solder on that bottom right hand uh, pin, maneuver the chip into position. Hmm, the camera's still a little bit in my way. Let's just bring it down a little way. Right, let's try that. So let's move that chip onto its position approximately, does that look about right? Drop it in. Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, let's have a close look at that. Um, well, actually, I think that's quite good. Yeah, I think that positioning is pretty good. So pin one is in the right place, isn't it? Have I got a pin one marker? Yeah, that um, silk screen dot. So I'm gonna solder the remaining pins of that. So let's pick up a bit of this flux, just wipe it down all those pins and then before it all completely evaporates let's get these pins all soldered that one that one that one Ooh, 
can I do these for? Yeah, without too much difficulty. Right, now I've got to go on a bit of a component hunt for mm, the 150 ohm resistor, the blue LED. Oh, that's here, I think. Yeah, blue LEDs are in there, 1206 blue LEDs. Uh, 82K 1%, 20K 1%, and 220 puff. Right, here's the blue LED. Um, you can see there there's a little green arrow on it, and I need to point the arrow um, to ground, which is on this right-hand side. So it should be that way around, but obviously flipped over the other way. But let's just um, put a bit of solder on the right-hand pad there. That's where it's going to go. Yeah, of course, there's an extra dimension to this if you've got to get the component the right way up. I don't actually know how to turn that with tweezers. I think I'm going to turn it with my fingers, but I risk it flipping over and going the wrong way. I think it's that way around. Let's tack it on. That looks okay. It's not pushed down very well. Let's push it down. That looks better. Solder, hmm, bit of flux, I think, first. Uh, is there any flux still on my piece of white plastic? There is now. Bit of flux on that side, bit of flux on that side. Let's tack on the left hand side. Oh, it's burning the flux off. Right hand side. Right, that should be the LED. Oh, now, have I got any 150 ohm resistors? Uh, so I bought these quite a while ago um, from Rapid Electronics, I think. So 4K7, 5,000 pieces. Um, what's that? 20k 1%, 5,000 pieces. Uh, 220k, I don't need those at the moment. Uh, let's all come unraveled. Uh, what's this? That's Oh, that's the 100N that I wanted yesterday. And this one is 82k 0805 1%. Uh, yes, I've got all of those. Hmm, I've got a sneaking suspicion that I never actually bought the 150 ohm resistors. Um, the nearest thing I've got is this 4K7. I could put the 4K7 in. It's not going to be a very bright LED, but at least it will light up. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So I'll put a 4K7 in adjacent to the LED, put some power on it and see if it flashes something. Yeah, I just had in the back of my mind that I never actually bought the 150 ohm can't remember why. I think I just forgot about it. Down you go. Let's try and solder the left hand side of that. Yeah, it's kind of on there. Right, now if I put power to that, um, pretty much the way I did yesterday, just by shoving this through those two holes, that LED should do something. Right, I've got uh, 13 and a half volts here from lead acid batteries outside. That's surprising actually because it's raining today. In fact, it's going to be raining for the next four days. Uh, let's see what happens. Right, the LED comes on and stays on for about two seconds, which is, that's correct. That's the kind of boot up indication. Now it's flashing that regular pulse. Now, it's a very quick pulse. And it's not very bright because I've got a 4K7 in there, but you can see it. Um, so that's telling me I've got less than 11.5 uh, volts. Well, that's, of course, because I haven't got my potential divider resistors on there. So I need the 82K, the 20K, and the 150, uh, the 220 puff capacitor. So let's get those three components on there. And then hopefully this should flash out the voltage on here, 13.5. Right, I've cut off um, a few 20Ks, a few 82Ks, and a few 220Ps. Uh, let's flip them over. And now the 82K, I believe, is the high one in the potential divider. Yes, it is. Let's get that one on first. Right, that 82K there is marked 8202, which sounds about right. 820 and two more zeros. That goes there so let's oh, rather a lot of solder on there but um that should be fine to get this to adhere oh heck the mm, that tantalum's in the way oh i did say that wasn't going to be a problem didn't i and now it is oh well, there's a thing right let's solder that on 
220k is marked 2002 it's a little bit of solder there a little bit there for the 220 puff let's pick that up and place it across there yeah that went on pretty well let's solder the other side of that that looks fine and now the 220pf uh, right they're all on there let's give it a try that way round there's the boot light ah right yes now that's modulating so that means um, that the charge controller has detected that the battery voltage is up to 13.5 volts and of course it is because there's another charge controller outside keeping it there uh, what I really want to do is bring the voltage on those batteries down a bit right I've got a bodge here um, I found my light bulb so I can plug that onto one end of this splitter uh, the other side can go onto this and that can go onto here make sure I get positive and negative the right way around it'll be that way plug power into the input here being careful not to cause problems and shorts that lamp should hold the voltage down aha uh -huh. now what's this going to flash out one two and about five of the short ones one two that means 12 volts and about five so 12.5 and in fact on my uh, meter it is saying well it's flicking between 12.5 and 12.7 but yeah that seems to be working let's just watch it again one two that's 12 volts and five tenths of a volt i think that's a winner and as this uh, 20 watt or 21 watt lamp consumes energy the voltage is dropping so it's now doing one two so that's 12 volts and i think three of the quicker flashes one two one two three yeah so it's now saying 12.3 volts uh 12.4 it's reading up on my window sill one two one two three that all looks pretty good to me well the chip's certainly working um yeah i'm well i'm reasonably happy now i'm going to undo that bulb take that off and then this voltage should rise up let's check it out oh one two three one so it's now saying 13.1 volts uh 12.9 i've got on my windowsill one two three one 13.1 volts so with the load removed that voltage is creeping up it's not sunny outside by any stretch of the imagination but yeah that's crept up to 13.1 so that looks good so yeah i mean from the point of view of getting that chip programmed and getting enough components on this to see that it's actually operating i'm happy for today um beyond this now of course i need to put the charge pump uh, components on if i do that i should be able to measure 20 volts at the output of the charge pump that's a couple of caps there another dual diode here and a tantalum capacitor there so we can check that 20 volts i'll perhaps do that in the next video and then we're really waiting for some sun to take this outside hook up a battery and a solar panel and make sure it behaves as a charge controller but um yeah for today i'm happy with that so cheerio